Uh, we've talked about current. The symbol for current is I. Sometimes people use either uppercase or lowercase I. So here's just yet another uh, concept that we're going to have to memorize a bunch of stuff about. Current. This is the symbol for current. The current represents the rate that charges are flowing at. The current represents the rate that charges are flowing at. So we might be able to figure out. So for example, the current past this point represents the rate at which charges are flowing past this point. Maybe we can figure out then what the units have to be. What would be good units for measuring the rate at which charges are passing this point? Are you ready? Can you say that again? We need to figure out what would be good units for measuring the rate at which charges are passing this point. Um. The rate at which charges are passing that point, or how quickly the charges are passing that point. Yes. Would it depend on. We don't. We don't. We're not trying to get a number here now. Just what would be good units? Okay. Um, For example, it wouldn't be say uh, kilograms per meter cubed. That wouldn't have anything to do with it. What would be good units for measuring the rate at which charges are passing this point? Well, I think it would depend on the voltage. The actual level would depend on the voltage. That's right. But all we want to get now are some units. Well, if we want to know how many charges are passing this point, what are the units for charge? Um, one. That's right. However, we want to know not the total number of charges that passed here, but the rate at which they're moving. So we need to compare the number of charges in a given amount of time. Maybe the question I was asking wasn't quite clear. But these are the logical units for calculating the rate at which charges are passing this point, coulombs per second. So if you understand what current means, that should help us to remember the units. But it also works vice versa. If you remember the units for current, that should remind you what the current means. It tells us how many coulombs are moving past a certain point per second. For example, suppose that the current at this point is 4 coulombs per second. How would we interpret that using some of the techniques that we've, we've learned for interpreting units? Um, in one second, four coulombs pass a certain point. Yeah, excellent. That's good. You're using the trick that we've seen, which is when we have a ratio of units, put a 1 on the bottom. This is telling us that if we watch this point for one second, um, four coulombs will pass through here. Now, that doesn't mean that we're only watching for one second. If we wanted to, we could watch for, say, three seconds. But this still is very helpful. How many ch ch coulombs would pass in three seconds? Oh. Yeah. We could just do that with unit analysis, as usual, to get 12 coulombs. So knowing how many coulombs pass in one second is very useful, even if you care about more than just one second. Notice that we just figured out how to figure out the total amount of charge if you know the current. The total amount of charge is the current times the time. But we shouldn't you know, hardly even have to write that formula down because it's just obvious based on these units. One thing to watch out for now is we don't want to confuse current and charge. It would be easy to confuse those two concepts. Charge is in coulombs. It's the total amount of charge. But current is in coulombs per second. It's the amount of charge that passes in a given amount of time. So we want to keep those two concepts separate in our mind. In terms of our ski lift analogy, what would this mean in terms of our ski lift? Well, remember in terms of our ski lift analogy, the coulombs are like the skiers. So that would mean like there are <coughs> four skiers per second passing through this point. Mm -hmm. Another analogy you could think of is this is like a water pump. This is like a water pump that's pumping water from a low point to a high point, and then it falls back down to the low point again. So then you could think of this like four liters of water that's passing here per second. Well, let's say that the total current coming from this battery, oh, and I should mention that there's a special name for this unit, which is an amp, or an amper, amperes. So more, more fun stuff to memorize. Just like we have to memorize that a volt is a joule per coulomb, we have to memorize that amperes are coulombs per second. And this is, again, something we really should memorize and not have to look up in our cheat sheet. 
uh, coulombs per second is amperes. But again, if someone tells you that the current is 5 amperes, in many cases, maybe you should rewrite that as coulombs per second because this is easier to interpret. Well, let's say that we say that we have a current of uh, 6 coulombs per second being delivered by the battery. So 6 coulombs per second are being delivered by the battery. If there are 6 coulombs per second coming off the battery, or 6 coulombs per second passing through the battery, how many coulombs per second do you think would be passing through this point? If we think about the simplest possible situation. If there's 6 coulombs per second being delivered by the battery, how many coulombs per second are probably moving through this point? Six. Yeah, that makes sense. Because um, the six, 6 coulombs per second are coming off of here, so they're pushing aside 6 coulombs per second from here. So how many coulombs per second would there be going through this point? Yeah, again, these have to get out of the way in order to make room for these 6 coulombs per second. It would work for skiers. If 6 gears per second are coming off the ski lift, well then 6 gears per second have to get out of this point to make room for them. And 6 gears per second would have to go through here. So what would be the current through the resistor? Just following that same analogy. I guess 6? Yeah, that's right. Not a trick question, but um, again, uh, if six gears per second are going through here, six gears per second would have to get out of the way over here. Maybe the water analogy works best here. If this is delivering six liters per second, well, that pushes aside six liters per second from this point, which pushes aside six liters per second from this point. Uh, in most cases, we don't really care about the current through the wire. What we care about is the current through the devices. So in many cases, we wouldn't bother labeling these. We would just label the current through each device. What we're starting to do here is we're starting to see how to do the types of problems you're likely to see. The types of problems you're likely to see are problems that will tell you some of the characteristics of a circuit. And then you have to figure out all the other characteristics of the circuit at other points. So for example, in that last problem, I told you, say, what the voltage was at one point, and you had to figure out the voltage at another point. Or I told you what the current was at one point, and you have to figure out the current at another point. So let's say this is a 15 volt battery, and there's three amps going through this resistor. Let's figure out everything else that we can figure out about this circuit. Well, if there are um, three amps going through here, how much current should be going through the battery? Um, three amps? Yeah. Three coulombs per second are being delivered here, which are pushing aside the three coulombs per second over here. And if this is a 15 volt battery, what should be the voltage of the resistor? 15 volts. That's a very different type of logic. If um, charges are gaining 15 units of height moving up here, they must be losing 15 units of height over here so they can get back to where they started. more complicated circuits. Again, we want to figure out everything that we can about this circuit. Well, if there's three amps going through this resistor, how many amps are going through the battery? Three. And how many through this resistor? Three. Yeah, three skiers per second going through here must be because there's three skiers per second coming in from behind over here, which must be because there's three skiers per second coming off the battery. Now let's think about the voltage. Uh, why did I put that like this? Let's actually do this first instead. So I'm not going to tell you what the voltage is across the resistors. Now remember that over here, we saw that there was one resistor. So if we had a 15 volt source, there must be a 15 volt drop across this resistor. Now we still have a 15 volt source, but now we have two resistors. Does the voltage drop here still have to be 15 volts? No. no. In fact, it can't be 15 volts. Is it going to be bigger or smaller than 15 volts? Smaller. Yeah, that, that's right. How, how do you know that? 
because those two resistors tend to have both a voltage side and a voltage That's right. How, what would be the analogy that would help you there? Thinking of this as the change in height. Remember that we're thinking of the skiers gaining 15 units of height moving up here. Well, then they're going to have to lose 15 units of height going all the way back down to where they started. That means that the amount of height they lose here plus the amount of height they lose here has to come together to be 15. So, for example, if this is a 10 volt drop, what would the voltage drop be over here? Five. Okay. 